Growing up in Venezuela, I saw how the country's socialist economic policies made it a struggle to survive. Every day, I looked out of my dad's car window and saw people rummaging in the trash for food, a reminder that it could be much worse. In 2016, while some Venezuelans were literally starving to death, President Nicolás Maduro announced that he was launching a new program called CLAP. Comienza una revolución económica en el sistema de distribución de alimentos del pueblo venezolano. Every Venezuelan family was supposed to receive a box of essential food items on a regular basis. The food inside was often inedible, especially the powdered milk. Haciendo la leche, mire lo que descubrimos. No sé qué clase de veneno le están metiendo a los venezolanos. The expert told us that it's a product that could damage bone development in kids. Juan Andrés Ravel directed a recent documentary for PBS Frontline called A Dangerous Assignment, which exposes a massive corruption scandal behind the CLAP program. Venezuela is what political scientists define as a kleptocratic state. It's run by people who want to enrich themselves to keep power. The film is told through the eyes of the investigative reporter, Roberto Dennis, as he follows where the money allocated for the club program really went. Yo no sabía con quién me iba a conseguir. No sabía todas las conexiones que después iban a seguir apareciendo. Ni la magnitud que tenía esto. ¿Qué pasa en un régimen como el venezolano cuando el periodismo se atreve a investigar a alguien con tanto poder? Dennis's investigation led him to Alex Saab, a close associate of Nicolás Maduro, who received the contracts to import food for the CLAP program. Saab became a multimillionaire practically overnight. He built a sprawling mansion in Colombia, married a former Italian supermodel, and bought a lavish property in one of Rome's wealthiest neighborhoods. From 2013 and on, uh, Alex Saab was Maduro's favorite contractor but he never talked about him. He was operating in the shadows. Saab's son, Shadi, an aspiring Hollywood actor, rented a mansion in Los Angeles and landed a small part in a film directed by Jamie Foxx, who had visited Venezuela and spent time with Maduro. The film was never released. Dennis reported that Saab, as a contractor, was responsible for the inedible food Venezuelan families received through the CLAP program and that he was paying kickbacks to Maduro. So Saab sued for defamation and libel. In Venezuela, if you got a lawsuit for defamation, you might end, end up in jail. For his safety, Dennis fled the country and continued his investigation. Justo coincide el momento en que nos toca salir de Venezuela con el momento en que estaba despertándose como el interés internacional sobre la figura de Alex Saab. In 2019, Saab was indicted on money laundering charges and sanctioned by the Treasury Department. The following year, he was en route to Iran when his plane stopped in Cape Verde to refuse. In relation to the empresario Colombian Alex Saab, one of the most hombres most wanted in the world by the Interpol, the barranquiller Alex Saab, was captured in the island of Cabo Verde in the consulate. After Saab's capture, the Venezuelan regime launched a campaign to rehabilitate his image. They were helped by leftist activists who echoed Maduro's claim that Saab was a hero of the poor, bravely standing up to the imperialist U.S. government. Alex Saab, a Colombian-Venezuelan diplomat, is the latest political prisoner of empire. Alex Saab, free him, send him home to Venezuela. What he was doing is circumventing the brutal, illegal U.S. sanctions on Venezuela by getting food and medicines to the people of Venezuela. I think some people involved in the, in the campaign are state-sponsored, and some other, they just buy propaganda that fits their narrative. Saab was extradited to a Miami jail and charged with stealing $350 million and falsifying documents. Then, a twist in the story surprised even Roberto Dennis. During court proceedings, it was revealed that Saab had been working as a double agent, providing U.S. law enforcement agencies with information on corruption within the Maduro regime. We still don't know why Maduro would defend Alex Saab still after knowing that he was an informant for the DEA. Alex Saab's lawyer said that Maduro was aware of everything that Saab had done. So it's hard to tell, it's really hard to tell. 
Two years after he was extradited to Miami, the Biden administration worked out an exchange for 10 American prisoners. When Saab arrived in Venezuela, he received a hero's welcome from Maduro. Did Maduro know that Saab was working as a U.S. informant? Why was he so adamant about bringing him back from the U.S.? By the end of the film, those remain unsolved mysteries. But overall, the documentary unfolds like a crime thriller. There are some mafia state elements in Venezuela. The way they're persecuting journalists, it, that's sort of like a mafia mentality. They, the way they turn on their own when they don't need them anymore, it's also a mafia mentality. The Venezuelan regime attempted to block Venezuelans from accessing the film after it was released, but that proved impossible. Well, the reception in Venezuela has been incredible. People started cutting the film, sharing it other ways, <laughs> making bootleg copies of the film. Uh, it's not even subtitled, but, uh, but people are sharing it. That's impressive. Um, now it's open on YouTube, so you can watch it. The film, in a way, does put a puzzle, a very uh, extensive and complex puzzle, in a very simple way, I hope. Maduro is staying in power despite losing the recent election, which means that Dennis' investigation won't bring him, Rosaf, to justice anytime soon. However, as depicted in a dangerous assignment, his reporting has helped to shift the public conversation. There is now a broad consensus, both within Venezuela and internationally, that the country is governed not only by a brutal dictatorship, but by a band of depraved criminals who have enriched themselves in part by stealing money intended to buy milk for hungry children. <laughs>